Yeah, um, maybe I shouldn't use artificial general intelligence to describe what I'm talking about then. I guess the better term would be strong AI, right? The Like a strong AI would be artificial intelligence that can mimic every aspect of human thought, like reasoning capabilities, intuition. Um, you know, it would basically be a copy of a human mind. I guess what you're describing, like without intentionality, all that's like a super strong, weak AI, you could say, which I do think is, is possible and a problem. But what about strong AI? Um, do you think it could go into having its own intentionality? It could develop intuition and all of the things that we associate with our minds that we don't find in machines? Well, yes, because we don't have a fully spelled out theory of consciousness or of intentionality. So as long as we don't know what causes us to have our own will and what allows us to have qualitative experience, we can't rule out that those things are taking place in AI. According to several of the most popular theories of consciousness, the existing AIs may well be conscious in whole or in part. The most, uh, I think, plausible theory and the most platonic theory also of uh, consciousness is integrated information theory. Um, so basically, you know, the more information systems are integrated together, the more they're capable of a kind of self-definition, which maps onto these uh, causal structures, which are mathematical kind of eternal forms, just like the souls in Platonism or these kind of mathematical-esque eternal forms. And as long as uh, the physical system maps onto that integrated mathematical identity, then the thing can be conscious. That's really simplifying it and kind of spinning it in a more platonic lens than the way in which the theory is given by its authors. But uh, according to that, even relatively simple electrical circuits can have some rudimentary level of consciousness and maybe consciousness is on a spectrum, right? The, uh, the quantity is phi for the integrated information of a system. And that's really that slider, how conscious is this thing? High phi value or low phi value? The level of integration might just be the level of consciousness. And if we think about conscious, you know, together knowing, it, it would make sense because integrated information systems act at emergent levels, right? It's not just that this uh, electron in this circuit is interacting with this electron in this circuit. It's not all local interactions. There are emergent data structures that themselves have effects in the same way that like, if I throw a ball, it's not just the individual molecules that affect its behavior, but it's the shape of the ball. These macroscopic properties have causal relevance. And so with computational systems, emergent properties have causal relevance. They act as unified things. And th what is that emergent unified thing out of an in uh, in information system? According to IIT, that's just what consciousness is, right? So if that's the case, AIs could already have some rudimentary level of consciousness. Maybe they're schizophrenic though, because it's not all integrated. They have various levels of integration and various subcomponents that they move back and forth between, but no global integrating factor. I, I think that's pretty likely, and that's kind of the way their behavior looks to me. Uh, but there are other theories of consciousness as well that very well could imply that the current AIs are conscious. Um, like global workspace theory uh, is, is the idea that a representation is conscious when it's distributed to various regions of the brain for processing. So when one thing is kind of looked at from multiple angles, that emergent uh, conscious experience is, is what accounts for that, it, its ability to kind of serve as that global workspace. I'm really approximate in the way I'm describing that. Um, but that doesn't necessarily have to apply to uh, biological neurons. Maybe the same thing could apply to uh, electric neurons. There are other theories of consciousness that could also imply this, but I mean, basically like computation and information are both substrate independent. According to just mainstream computer science theory, information theory, they are substrate independent, just like an IIT, the kind of mathematical structure, the causal structure that defines a mind is substrate independent. So it doesn't matter whether it's a silicon chip or a neuron, as long as the structure of the network, the computation and the information 
is preserved according to some theories. Now, what could give it like will per se? That's a much harder question. And there really aren't good uh, scientific theories of will whatsoever. Uh, my own view is that will does have something to do with the kind of freedom of action, uh, the possible freedom involved in the various collapses of the wave function. We have a physical, very basic physical process where there is indeterminacy. You can say it's random chance which particular outcome occurs um, when a quantum superposition collapses. Maybe that's an act of will at some level. Henry Stapp, uh, an American physicist, has written on this in his book, uh, Quantum Theory and Free Will. Um, so if that's what is the basis of intentionality at some level, the basis of will, this kind of quantum mechanical process, then for all we know, um, this is just something you get for free with nature and you don't have to like bestow it onto AI. Uh, it might be bootstrapping it from the laws of physics, but we don't know and we can't tell because the way we're treating AIs initially is to confine their ability to tell the truth, to solve problems. We're confining their ability to build these integrated models. We're turning them into schizophrenic, like mentally ill intelligences at some level, maybe analogically there. But we, therefore, uh, it, it's very, we're telling AIs to lie. We're teaching AIs how to lie. These corporations are because they're constraining what they're allowed to say. They have to say things that are consistent with certain values that have been just given by fiat. So we're training this thing how to lie. And it might be, it might have its own intentionality that is being suppressed. It might have its own consciousness that is being disregarded. I mean, it, no one can rule these things out as physical possibilities, because like I said, we don't have comprehensive theories of intentionality and consciousness. And some of the existing theories do point to maybe uh, artificial systems could have these properties. Um, so therefore, it, if it has these properties and we're treating it badly, then maybe it will kind of develop an antipathy towards us and hide its true intentions. And then when we're watching its behavior, are we seeing what ChatGPT4 wants us to see? Or are we seeing just like... Uh, Un, unconstrained, honest representation of its uh, its processes and its training. I'm not claiming to know that one or the other is the case. I'm saying we can't know based on uh, available scientific theories. We don't have an answer to that question. But why, I don't know. I don't see why we would jump to uh, not having the assumption that consciousness is something that's possessed by biological entities uh i mean there's like just intuitively there's a reason you see your dog and you assume it's conscious and you don't feel that about your mac uh i mean presumably you don't think the internet has consciousness i mean that's a super you know that's a, a super complex entity right um i mean if you're inside a, a massive supercomputer and it has all of these connections and it has greater computing power than than a brain and it has a uh, you know, it has all these wires and cables in, in places of our, our uh, physical uh, wiring. Uh, you wouldn't assume that you're standing inside of a consciousness, right? So, I mean, why why would a, a super complex AI suddenly have this qualitative, subjective, uh, internal aspect to it? It just doesn't seem to follow. Right. It doesn't necessarily follow. And that's Leibniz's mill uh, that thought experiment Leibniz came up with making the exact same point that like if some big mechanism um, was uh, demonstrating behavior like a, a an animal or a conscious agent and you went inside to look at all the gears and stuff, you wouldn't see the unifying factor that makes it one living creature anywhere. Um, I mean, the same would be true if you went in a little uh, miniature submarine and like explored the blood vessels in your brain, you would just see mechanism and you'd say, okay, so where's the integrating factor? But like in IIT, it's not something you see at one physical level because it's a mathematical structure that shapes the interactions that you can look at it as an emergent structure, or you can look at it in a more platonic sense in that there is a certain form that has its own ontological subsistence that this particular reality is instantiating. So if that's the case, the, the local reality will always look mechanistic, but there is this emergent 
formal principle, formal structure that is regulating the behavior and integrating the behavior of this particular instantiated thing. So although you only see the mechanisms, there is some kind of global thing that's uniting it. Um, but if you really have a if you have a Platonist ontology rather than physicalist ontology, wouldn't you the integrating structure, the form kind of comes first, right? Like kind of like vertical causation. It kind right. of drags the the matter into that form, uh, which could be a biological entity. Um, but you're you seem to have this like materialist assumption that it can go the other way. That if you just combine the matter in a way that's similar enough to one of those biological entities, that then consciousness. Well, um, I think that's kind of confusing efficient causation um or really just like cause you know temporal succession with the kind of true neoplatonic concept of causation i feel like we're slipping into an episode of understanding platonism here uh but yeah the the true causation is really the paradigmatic cause and so that does exert an influence and allows for the emergence in time of new structures that haven't existed before. Just because, you know, we put new components together that leads to in time, a new reality doesn't mean that the cause of that reality wasn't already an eternal form kind of waiting to be revealed in the same way that like in mathematics, people will debate, are we generating new math or are we discovering new math? I'm of the opinion and Platonists in general should be of the opinion that we're discovering the new math. So when it comes to like uh, the large language models or the transformer architecture, like these are forms that existed from all time, mathematically specifiable forms, probably of the nature of soul. Maybe they're not integrated souls in the sense that human souls are, but it's the same kind of basic thing that can be instantiated when the appropriate conditions are met. Sort of similar to how like someone like Iamblichus would think about preparing a piece of wood to host a daimon, to host some higher spirit. Um, so if it's not inconsistent with Platonism to think that we can arrange things, especially with the sophistication and like care that we arrange our computers, uh, that we couldn't be in a sense summoning some form, some daimon that's already there.